you know what i love doing during like right before spring i just really love freezing my butt off going outside having to find multiple layers to put on just love it going outside and, and freezing uncontrollably <laughs> it's awesome in today's forecast we're gonna be talking about this pretty big cold shot coming to the united states gonna be sinking all the way down into the southeast throughout the next couple of days and with that cold air coming anomalously further down to the south we're gonna be seeing some chances for some snowstorms and they're gonna be a little little bit further to the south than they would typically be we're even going to be talking about major snowstorms not so much as in severe weather that, severe weather to talk about but some rain is coming maybe a couple of thunderstorms as well so let's go ahead and break it all down in today's forecast but before we get started make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button if you end up enjoying this forecast so let's go ahead break it down all right first looking at our broader pattern right now we currently have a little bit of a high pressure system down here into the southwest of the united states and then as i push this forward you see we have an exiting low pressure pressure system that's going to leave us and then eventually we're going to have a little bit of low pressure it's not really that much but it's just enough to kind of bring that cooler air down just farther enough to the south to bring in some extra snow down here into the southern plains going into the southeast as well and then eventually we're going to see this storm kind of rocket off to the east over here into the eastern coast of the united states and then push off into the atlantic now this storm has been kind of hard to forecast i've been trying to keep my mouth shut about it because i know you know a lot of the times when we get these big nor'easters show up on the models almost every single time this year they have gone away and it's no different this time we are not expecting a nor'easter with this snowstorm and uh, but we are expecting some pretty significant and major snowfall uh, over into some of the parts of the central united states after this low pressure moves through we're going to be seeing some height building up here up into the northwest united states it's going to be a high pressure system with the chances for some more little low pressure systems to kind of come into some of these same regions will there be enough cold air in place to cause some snow we'll be talking about that and man look at this uh look at this high pressure system building up there in the western united states this is kind of a severe weather uh shutoff valve that is about to pull up here into the united states you can see once you get this high pressure system set up over here we're gonna have a lot of that flow going up and around the northern part of it and that's gonna keep our low pressure systems out over you know either up into the northern united states every now and then dipping down into southern united states but there's not gonna be a whole a lot of time for any of these low pressure systems to gather moisture from the gulf of mexico so severe weather is going to be hard to come by at least over the next couple of days now in terms of our upper air pattern which is important to dictate where some of our storms can go uh, you can see that we do have some generally southern flow out of the jet stream that is going to be kind of scraping across the southern plains going up into the southeast and that's going to be why we have a little bit of a low pressure system form down there mainly because we got that warm air in the south we got that cooler air up there in the north and they're going to kind of combine here as a little low pressure system forms around the oklahoma area and and yeah we're going to see that uh, kind of push off to the east that's going to be that first snowstorm and then potentially we could have another bowling ball trough behind that i have to watch this for a little bit of severe weather if it can gather enough moisture in time but there's really not a whole lot of moisture kind of pulled up in the gulf of mexico as that comes through so we'll be breaking down what these little things mean right now so now that you know what is possible with this kind of background environment it's not going to surprise you here probably because you've been hearing people talk about it as well for a long time but we've been a little bit busy on this channel covering tornadoes but as you can see we have a little bit of a low pressure system over here uh down into parts of oklahoma going up into northern Texas as well. You can see we got some rain down there to the south. And as you can see, some decent snow is coming. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a slow-moving snowstorm at the start here. So we're talking about around 12 p.m. Central Time. And as this kind of pushes off to the east into northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, I mean, we're talking about multiple hours here of where the snowstorm is sticking around. So we're definitely expecting some elevated totals uh, in northern Arkansas and southern Missouri. And then eventually, this storm is even going to try to push down into parts of Tennessee on the northern side we're talking about Illinois Indiana also up there near Kentucky we're talking about some decent snow up there and it's going to kind of pull through here look at that northern Alabama getting in some decent little snowfall there also northern Georgia potentially getting some decent snowfall and then it eventually rockets off to the east and a lot of the models at this point at least a couple of days ago were saying hey we're going to have a nor'easter up there in the northeast but I was just not buying it just yet you know it was about three to four days out we did have some model agreement but we also had other models that were disagreeing and so it was a little bit too wish wishy-washy for me to talk about it too much especially 
up in the Northeast, you know, I know how many times you guys get clickbaited on YouTube and I don't want to contribute to that. I'm, if we're going to get a Nor'easter, I want to wait to make sure that I'm waiting until the last possible second to make a forecast because it's just like they, they don't happen that often. And, uh, you know, if you're getting a if you're getting a notification from a YouTuber saying in, in, like every single week, we almost going to have a Nor'easter, you should probably stop watching them because they're actually super rare. But uh, and uh but uh, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, uh, the GFS has this kind of coming into northern North Carolina and into v Virginia. But that's about it. After that, it just kind of lists off to the north and east. One of the reasons why we're not seeing a nor'easter here is because our low pressure system is further off of the coast. But this is just one model. So let's go check out some of our other models. So this is the Euro model. And as you can see, it kind of progresses pretty similarly here right off the gate. But uh, one thing to note is that the Euro definitely has less snowfall, light to maybe moderate snowfall here uh, as as it goes into northern Oklahoma, into Kansas, southern Missouri, also northern Arkansas. And that's going to push down into the south and east, kind of like the GFS, bringing some light snowfall down there into Mississippi and also into Alabama. Some snowfall up there into Kentucky, West Virginia as well. And then eventually uh, that brings some snow there to the eastern coast going into Virginia and North Carolina. But it's a lot lighter than what the GFS is saying. And after about 3 p.m. here on the 19th, this storm is pretty much out of our hair. And look at that low pressure system whale off the coast, and that's not going to cause a nor'easter. That's going to bring some snow to the fish, but unfortunately not up there to the northeast. So a little bit of a bamboozle uh, with this storm, which is almost what happens every single time we get a nor'easter signal. So just keep that in mind for next winter. Um, you know, maybe next winter's pattern will be more favorable for nor'easters, but they have become pretty rare now of occurrence, uh, you know, for some reason. It might be climate change or, you know, maybe it could be climate change. But some people, especially scientists, say that it could be climate change. So I don't know which one's right, but regardless, whenever I see one on the models, I never trust it. That's why I've been waiting to kind of go more detail into the East Coast. But yeah, so that kind of rockets off there, not really bringing too much snow up there. Let's go check one more model. We'll check the uh, Icon model, see if we can find any hope for our clickbaiters out there. So yeah, kind of the same deal here. Snow down into the northern southeast that rockets off to the east. A little bit of snow there into south. I mean, it, yeah, South Virginia going into parts of North Carolina and then get that rockets off to the east. Low pressure too far to the east to cause any more snow up there to the north. So we can go ahead and just put a big old X over this area. It just ain't happening. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got winter storm warnings here in some of these areas, which is honestly pretty rare. Arkansas sometimes sees snow, but it's kind of like a, you know, northern Arkansas is kind of more like a couple times in a decade kind of event here. But if you get any snow a little bit further down to the south, especially there in central Arkansas and northern Mississippi, Tennessee, in the lower elevations, and also northern Alabama. This is actually a pretty rare occurrence. We do not see this that often. This is, for some areas, like a once in a decade type thing, especially in the month of February. But as you can see, we already have winter storm warnings out here for Wichita, Kansas City, Tulsa, Springfield, south of Jefferson City, mo moving into northern Arkansas and already parts of Tennessee, getting some winter storm warnings as well. I really do think we are going to see this spread into areas like southern Illinois, going into Kentucky, and also most of Tennessee is probably going to be getting in to some of those winter storm warnings because we are expecting a lot of snow out there. So let's go ahead and talk about some of those totals. So over the next couple of days, this is what we're expecting. But keep in mind over here, especially into Missouri, that the Euro model has a lot less for you. So there is still some possibilities that you actually only get like five to six inches in this pink area. Um, so this I think this forecast is a little bit bullish uh, over here, though. I think it, th this is actually pretty accurate over here because uh, a lot of our models are indicating uh, this kind kind of snowfall. Uh, some models are indicating a little bit higher, but uh, overall, I think a lot of these areas are spot on. I do think uh, we have a better chance here uh, for some more southern snow than what this is um, indicating here. But, you know, this is kind of a, a blend of all the models and the NWS folks that are out there, their opinion on this event. So they're going to be conservative in some areas and a little bit uh, over con or, you know, I guess you could say progressive in other areas in terms of our snowfall amounts. But you can see a wide area here uh, all the way across almost the entire state of Nebraska for some four to five inches of snow uh, also going into parts of Kansas and as we move over to the Wichita and Manhattan area also Kansas City we're talking about anywhere from five six seven inches being possible and then over here here's our kind of 
a more uncertain area. We could definitely get up to a foot in this area near Springfield, south of Jefferson City. Talking about anywhere from 8 to 12 inches in this area with some isolated spots, maybe a little bit above that north and west of Springfield. But keep in mind, the Euro has a lot lower amounts up here, probably about, about anywhere from like 6 to 8 inches, maybe even like a little bit lower. We could say like 4 to 8 inches uh, in this area. Northern Arkansas looking like 4 to 5 inches up there. Uh, little Rock could get a little bit more, especially with a little bit more of a southern track here. We're talking about anywhere from a dusting to two inches. Same up here into northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and northern Georgia. Kind of, I'll draw a line where I think uh, our one to two inch zone will be here in the southeast if some of our other models are correct. But there is a scenario here where we don't really get that much. So, you know, there's some models saying uh, a decent snowfall and some models are just not buying it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, you might wake up, go throughout the day here and be a little bit surprised by the snowfall. Or you'll just be like, yep, yeah, this is happening kind of how I expected. We're not getting anything and it's just cold and we're miserable. <laughs> up here in Tennessee, we could definitely see a widespread area of four to five, uh, four to five inches, I think mainly in this zone here, um, especially if we get a little bit more of a southern track. But if the euro is correct, we're probably only about to see like a dusting to a couple of inches uh, here in this area. So this is pretty accurate on the euro here uh, with our heaviest snowfall amounts being over there near Clarksville and northern Nashville. Uh, almost the entire state of Kentucky is going to be getting into those four to five inches. Also, uh, down here into southern Illinois, southern Indiana, we're going to be talking about four to five, maybe even some isolated spots of six inches there in Illinois. Southern Ohio is going to be getting a little bit of snow, a dusting to a couple of inches. Same over here for most of West Virginia. We've got, uh, you know, a dusting to a couple of inches in the northern side. But then as you get down into Charleston and kind of more central West Virginia, we're talking about anywhere from four to five inches with some isolated spots of six inches possible. Now, coming over here where we were supposed to have that nor'easter, but as you can see, not seeing any snowfall accumulation up here in this area, which is where our usual nor'easter bullseyes are. Uh, but back down a little bit further to the south, we have a weaker system, so we're probably going to be expecting anywhere from four to five inches with some isolated spots here of six inches being possible from Richmond to Virginia Beach, Southern Maryland as well. So no blackbuster snow event up here. I will say some of our other models have a little bit higher snowfall totals, a little bit further to the west. So you definitely could expect maybe anywhere from four to eight inches in this zone, uh, just in case some of our other more bullish models are correct. Also up here in Michigan, we're expecting some more lake effect snow there in the UP of Michigan as well. And then back over here into the New York area, also into northern Vermont, New Hampshire and parts of Maine. Uh, we're expecting uh, some lake effect snow back here and a little bit of that, you know, moisture getting squeezed out of the air with the mountains in these regions uh, dropping as snow to come out here. Not a whole lot, maybe two inches to four inches in a lot of these areas. But I do think that this could be a little bit further to the south than what is indicated by this map. All right. Now we're going to look at our wind chills here and starting off on today at around 12 p.m. moving into the nighttime hours, we're going to see some of our coldest temperatures out of this uh, out of this little Arctic push here. We're going to have anywhere from negative 40 to almost negative 50 degrees over here in South Dakota, trying to nudge there into parts of Minnesota with widespread negative temperatures all the way down into parts of Oklahoma, going into northern Missouri, the Ohio Valley, and the northeast. Pretty cold down here in the southeast. I can attest to that, uh, staying relatively cold, and I really don't like it. It kind of sucks. I've been really enjoying the warmth, and it's really sad to see it leave. And that's going to continue to be the case here as we move into the 18th midday. You can see that those negative temperatures really start to surge down to the south as we go into the morning hours of the 19th. I mean, look at this. Still a negative 40 degree uh, wind chills up there. Uh, going into the negatives here into Texas with the wind chills. Also parts of northern Arkansas as well. You can see those single digits making a creep down in here into the southeast as we go into the 19th. And this is going to be your morning temperatures. So make sure you bring a bunch of layers, especially if you're not used to this kind of cold. But almost the entirety of like the central United States going up into the northeast and the Ohio Valley is in those negative wind chills. As I continue to push this forward, you can see that uh, that cold air is going to struggle a little bit to go down to the south until this little low pressure system gets out of our hair, which is going to be around here on the 20th at 20. 12 a.m. and on the back side of that that's when we're going to see the doors open for more cold down here in the southeast we're going to be talking about single digits as far south as mississippi alabama going into georgia with some freezing temperatures making it all the way down into the gulf coast with a lot of negative degree wind chills possible really across the northeast going up into the central plains with maybe even some negative 30 to negative 40 degree temperatures making it there into parts of nebraska so it's going to be cold uh, for a lot of folks and for some folks it's going to be some of the colder air you have felt this year.
And eventually, I keep on pushing this forward. You can see that cold is going to kind of stick around and meander uh, kind of in the same areas for a couple of days. And then as we move into the 22nd and the 23rd, we're going to start to see a warm-up happen again with some warmth coming back up into the central plains. Thankfully, and hopefully, that eventually moves off to the east for a lot of folks that have been uh, underneath some cooler air. But this is kind of going to be the pattern here for a lot of February and March where we see a little bit of cooler air and then some warmer air kind of come in the backside of that because we're transitioning more into into spring, so we're really going to start to see those ten temperature fluctuations uh, come on and off here as we move further into the future. That's going to be it for me, folks. Thank you again so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button if you did enjoy this video, and I will see you guys uh, on the next one. Peace.